I think I can do it without the one piece of technology. Right now. Okay, there you go. Mr. Rogers, thank you. The folks in Ohio want to say something. Nothing happened in my end. I think they're just. I can see them. They can see me. Okay, you can talk. Go ahead, Grover. Yes, no, they can hear me now. I'm not hearing anything from them. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You can hear me. Okay. I'm not hearing you. I can hear guys. If you're talking. Okay. Grover, can you hear us now? Now I can. Yes. All right. All right. Want to say hi again one more time from Ohio? One, two, three. <laughs> hi guys, that's loud. Wow, good. <laughs> well, we have a full house here. We're talking about the uh, Article Five process here, and uh, we encourage you to uh, please uh, share your thoughts on that. Sure. Um, I went through this all back in the late '70s, uh, early '80s when the fight was over a balanced budget amendment. Uh, I got out of college in nine, uh, June of 78, went straight to work for the National Taxpayers Union. James Dale Davidson um, organized it. Uh, he was working with others who uh, were trying to get uh, a constitutional amendment to require a balanced budget. Matter of fact, uh, 1978, uh, James Dale Davidson, head of NTU, uh, endorsed uh, Bacchus, Max Bacchus, who was then running for his first term in the Senate because Bacchus said he would support a constitutional uh, amendment, a balanced budget amendment. Bacchus is now retiring, never having supported a constitutional amendment, which suggests that uh, going to the American people to draft such an amendment is probably a better idea than counting on a bunch of Democrat senators who make promises to get to the two-thirds, but take turns never providing the two-thirds uh, that, that uh, takes place. So uh, we started the convention call. Uh, I think when I was at NGU, we, got, we went from 12 states and added 18, got to uh, 30, went beyond that, but uh, after I had left uh, the National Taxpayers Union. And we had all the same uh, debates that people are having now, so one can uh, it, it is, there's nothing new under the sun about why this is uh, supposed to get not work, uh, and it has all the advantages that we saw in the 70s. That uh, one, this is not extra constitutional. This is part of the Constitution. You know, just because they've never used the ninth or tenth amendment doesn't mean they're not important parts of the Constitution, and we shouldn't start exercising them. The ninth and tenth. The amendments to the Constitution are a great idea. We should read them from time to time and share them with judges. Uh, and Article 5 is Article 5, because it's Article 5 of the Constitution. Uh, it's there, the Founding Fathers, who got an awful lot of stuff right. Not sure about that post office idea, Ben Franklin, but the rest of the Constitution, I think, still makes a certain amount of sense. Uh, and there should be uh, an understanding that. They put this in for a reason. There's a Senate and a House for a reason. You know, Parliament, uh, other places only have one body. They don't do a second regional, they don't do Senate. Um, but there was a reason for it uh, when they put it forward. And uh, uh, Article 5 will allow states to do this. Clearly, we can get laws passed that, that govern, that we can't send people to a limited constitution, have it become unlimited. Uh, and Ohio's been taking a leading role in this. I think that this is the time. Because look, it is frustrating in Washington, D.C. if you're trying to advance liberty in any uh, permanent way. We have a Republican House, uh, which has voted for the Ryan budget plan, which is great. It takes government spending down six trillion over the next decade. Uh, and vote three times voted to abolish Obamacare, but we have a Democratic Senate that won't have any part of any of that. Uh, and a president uh, around for another two and a half, three years, who will veto anything useful or decent. Uh, so, you, okay, you got good luck. So what does somebody who wants to move the ball forward on liberty do, given that the best we can do in Washington, D.C. is play defense and stop bad things from happening? which is a big improvement over three years ago 
when bad stuff was happening unimpeded. I mean, the Wagner, just, it is. But we can't make a lot of forward progress out of Washington. But in the states, there is, instead of having gridlock, we have agreement in 25 states. Ohio is one of them. You have a Republican House, Republican Senate, Republican governor. And in 25 states, if we, the Republicans can get together on something, we can pass it. Uh, there are 13 states, that's true for the Democrats, so they can turn their California, Illinois, Minnesota, Maryland into California or Greece as rapidly as they want. Uh, we can turn our states into Hong Kong or Texas as rapidly as, as we are capable. So I think moving liberty forward state by state and using Article 5 to prepare ourselves for when we do have votes in the House and the Senate to, to be able to do stuff, but work through the states. Don't count on Washington, D.C., where, where they have gridlock. Um, this allows us, so you don't get, among other things, gives us something to do. We don't get frustrated. Uh, it's an education process. We're educating the American people about the Constitution, about how it was set up, about Article 5, and about the dangers of spending too much money. And we could win. So uh, some fights are worth fighting, even if you didn't think you could win, because you uh, educate voters on the subject. Some fights um, move you forward because maybe you get part of the way there. But I think this is also one of those fights where we can actually win. Uh, but while we're, we wait on winning, having enough states to move, every state we bring this up, we actually strengthen the forces of liberty during the discussion by having the debate and then by winning it even more. So this was a very important fight. It got not sidetracked, but, you know, we elected Ronald Reagan, and a lot of conservatives thought, well, now he's going to fix everything in Washington, D.C., and, and some of the excitement and, and pressure on Article 5 diminished. And what we needed to remind people is, yeah, there was a 1981, there was a Republican Senate, not a Reagan Republican Senate, but a Republican Senate, and Reagan, and the House was run by the forces of international Bolshevism. So, going uh, to get in the way of progress, and we should have continued the Article 5 fight, but it's, it's hard sometimes to tell your team there are limits to what you can achieve in Washington, D.C. Uh, it sounds like you're discouraging them, or you're telling them to give up, or surrender, or something like that. That's not it. It's just, arithmetic is a good thing, you know. Learn to count. If you don't have the presidential veto and the other team has you know, more than 50 votes in the Senate, there's a limit to what you can do. But at the state level, there really isn't. And that's where we can make so much progress. Uh, and as we make progress in the states, like with term limits, we have term limits in the House and the Senate on committee chairs, the most powerful people in D.C., an entire class of barons, they call them. Right, because they were like European dukes and barons, and they ran their own fiefdoms, and they had almost as much power as the king on a bunch of stuff. And certainly, the peasants had no say in the barons running things. We took those people, and every six years, we throw them out of office. We have this little rolling French Revolution going on with uh, uh, moving out uh, people who used to have power that they'd exercised for thirty or forty years. That came from the states, from the states going state by state on term limits and selling people and making people used to the idea of term limits. Now with Article 5, we can move through the states and basically surround Washington, D.C. and can convince the world that this is a good idea. And eventually that will help us crack D.C. Thank you, Grover, for those inputs. Uh, the Alpha, the Arena People Convention in Ohio, thank you for your valuable time, and uh, we appreciate you. Okay.